Road Race podcast. This is another episode on Two Timothy, and I'm back here with Pastor Rob Stredder. How are you, Rob? It's good to be with you again, John Mark. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm very well, thank you. That's brilliant. We're looking forward to recording this second one. Now, your first sermon on Two Timothy was on verses six to seven. Could you explain this to us and the title? You named it Fanning the Gift. I had a lot of thoughts about this, really. Thinking about Timothy, thinking about the context that he was in and what Paul was actually saying, Timothy was at the very heart of what Paul's missionary, well, particularly second missionary journey, uh, Paul's instructions to the churches from uh, 2 Corinthians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Philemon, all came from Timothy too. So Timothy was very notably gifted. Uh, a very gifted young man, and Paul calls him even a co-worker of God Mm. in the gospel of Christ. So Timothy was gifted, but because of the kind of intensity of the persecution at that time, this gifting was in danger of being snuffed out, just as dying embers, I suppose, in a fire need fanning back into flame. It seems that that Timothy's gifting needed that too. I mean, that fanning actually needs an action on our part. Uh, Paul actually says to him in verse six, I remind you, Timothy, to fan into flame the gift of God that is in you. Mm. There's a real emphasis on Timothy doing the fanning, uh, stirring up or rekindling is probably a more accurate translation there rekindling that gift that was in you that was timothy's responsibility and of course god gives the gift and the holy spirit inspires us and equips us as we are enabled to use that gift but that doesn't divorce us from our responsibility to take action in making this gift active in our lives Hmm. what an exhortation this really was from paul Timothy was actually in danger of allowing circumstances to suppress his gifting. And that's a danger. It can happen to any of us. He needed to take action and quickly. The gospel of Christ was at stake. This was a very critical time in history. When you think about that, it was the end of the apostolic age and the devil in all his orchestration of trying to finish off the gospel was at his most raging and here's young little timothy with his gifting being suppressed because of this intense persecution and paul is rallying him up saying don't Mm. let this die the slow death of an ember timothy you need to take action here work it out make it live fanning the gift hence the title Yeah, thank you for that. That's really helpful. It's almost as if Paul is saying to Timothy, it's, you know, it it seems that you are like these dying embers and you need to fan it not just into a flame, but almost a wildfire. You need to let the gift free. You need to let it grow. Yeah. I think there was one point you made about Paul exhorting Timothy and you drew some applications for us as members of churches and as believers. Could you bring some of them out? Yeah, well, I think we're in a very strange society in many ways. And there does seem to be, generally speaking, this is not to point fingers at any particular church or any particular person. But generally speaking, there seems to be a lack of maturity, uh, kind of a taking or owning responsibility. Mm. Um, And it's predominantly in in men. I don't know what's happened Mm in our society really. Men have become really recluse. Uh, they, they seem to feed on being funny and when they're not funny, it turns into silliness and stupidity. And the idea of taking hold of maturity seems very uh, vague, I think, in society today. One man put it this way, there's, there's nothing more ugly than an old infant. And if society harnesses such an attitude, 
you'll end up with people who, who don't know how to deal with difficult times and they will come. Mm. And, and, and men are falling apart at the seams when they're faced with real responsibilities and they're left bitter or resentful. Uh, they can be really adrift in society uh, without any purpose. We need men to man up and uh, it, it, inevitably this has crept into the church and it, it's sad to see so many gifted gifted people in the Christian world, uh, potential that needs unleashing. And yet there's this kind of holding back, this resistance, this hiding from the responsibility, shrinking. Mm -hmm. uh, and as we've said, allowing the circumstances around them to suppress their gifting. What we lack in many of our churches today is the ability to exhort. Mm -hmm. We've lost that ability somehow. Uh, we just need to know how to exhort. We don't know how to be exhorted either, it seems. That's a, it's a frightening thing for most people to be exhorted. But here we've got Paul exhorting Timothy. We know that, that Timothy took it on because we have the gospel today. And it was a, as a result of Timothy and like-minded men at that time yeah. to stand up and be counted. Mm. And it's a helpful thought to think that if Timothy heeded this exhortation, then how many people have been blessed since? Wow. You know, since Timothy's ministry. Yeah. Because of that exhortation that Paul gave. Yeah. Yeah. And to think that we are a people, I think you're right, who we fear being exhorted mm. and we also fear to exhort. Mm. So what opportunities are we missing because we're not exhorting people? Yeah, and, and you make a very good point, John Mark. It, it's a double whammy, isn't it? The mm. fear of exhorting somebody in case you might offend them yeah. and the fear of being exhorted, feeling that you're kind of inadequate in some way. So mm. the devil's been very cunning here with modern man and uh, he's certainly known how to suppress many, many giftings in, in the people of God. Mm. Uh, to kind of wake up from all of this and recognize that, that God has given us, God has equipped us with this wonderful spirit that we know that we have. Yeah, thank you for that. You emphasize two things for us, mm. power and love. Could you explain to us what power and love have to do with this whole idea of fanning the gift and this exhortation that Paul has for Timothy? Sure. The wonderful thing is, although there's this massive responsibility on us to fan the gift, we, 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 we need to take action ourselves. We need to own our responsibilities uh, and man up, as it were. Mm. Um, but we're not left alone with that. Paul encourages Timothy at the same time here, which is encouraging for us. Responsibility can lay heavy on people's shoulders, especially when it's, you know, the first time. It's not easy to stand for Christ in, in some situations hmm. and the world can be really cruel. So Paul says here in verse seven, that you're not on your own, Timothy, for God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love. Hmm. So Paul is saying to Timothy here that this isn't a spirit of cowardice or fear, but rather God has given us a spirit of power and of love. Power is, is the word, I, I kind of mentioned this in, in the sermon, it's the word du, dunamis, which is where we get our word dynamite. It's a very <laughs> dynamic energy uh, that, that produces results. Where it differs from dynamite, if you light the fuse to dynamite, you get nothing but confusion and a complete mm. mess. The difference here with this dunamis is that it is a very controlled power. Mm. Not explosive power, but dynamic, controlled power that is capable and that can accomplish. Not a self-promoting spirit that is self-driven. I've got to get into everybody's mind that I'm a gifted person and I do everything I can to show people that I'm a gifted person. That's not power. That's mm. just pride. Nor is it a, a power that wants to dominate or or have dominance over others. Again, that's, that's corruption. That's not power. 
Uh, what, what Paul is speaking about here is, is a spirit that recognizes that this power is from God. Mm. And therefore, it is a power that strengthens. It is a power that fortifies, a power that helps him to know he has something to offer mm. and to put in line with who he is supposed to be. And God is equipping, equipping that person mm. um, with the giftings and the callings that God has for him. So the Christian understands that and he really does receive this gift as from God. So that's what the power is. It's a, it's a liberating power. And Jesus speaks about this in Luke. Mm. Uh, when, he, when he ascended, uh, he said to the disciples, behold, I am sending the promise of my father upon you. Only wait in the city, he says, until you are clothed with mm. power from on high. So the spirit of God is given to his people here. Um, it is a spirit that is looking to and relying on a mm. power and a source that is in Christ. You, therefore, my son, he says in chapter two, verse one, be strengthened by the grace of Christ. And the kind of well-known verse that uh, Paul speaks of in Philippians 4, 13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The flip side of that is I can do no thing through self, which weakens me. So we've got to recognize that this power is harnessed by God. Mm. and It gives us a liberty to use the gift that we have. That's, that's the power that God gives. It's not a self-authenticating power. And, and love is, um, well, of course, if you haven't got love, you've got nothing. Uh, Paul speaks about this in Corinthians, doesn't he? Uh, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels. Wow. Hmm. Imagine being able to speak with the tongues of angels and yet haven't, hasn't got love. He says, I become just a, a, a sounding racket, a, a, a clanging irritation. The most powerful and effective sermons you hear are so because they are preached in love. Hmm. And the most powerful and effective words spoken are so because they are spoken in love. So without love, we're, we're nothing and we have nothing. Hmm. So it's this spirit of power and of love that is so critical in the use of the gifting that God has given to us. And love has no fear. If you've really got love in the gifting you're using, there won't be a spirit of fear or cowardice. Mm. There'll be a real determination to do this because of the love of Christ, because of the love of fellow man, the love of mm. the church. There is a bravery that comes with love that is untold if that love is pure. So it's, it's a very powerful uh, thing is this love. Mm. Yeah, thank you for that, Rob. That's really helpful to look at both power and love and really how together they're an assistance to each of us. We should be using them in our Christian lives. Yeah, yeah thank you for that. Now, the third listed here in verse seven, mm. where we read a spirit not of fear, but of power and love. Mm. Then we read and of a sound mind. Mm. Now, you were quite helpful there. Could you give us some insights into that phrase? It is an unusual word. It's actually only used once. Mm. Um, and it's, it's a person with a well-balanced mind. That's what he's, he's referring to. Under the right influences, he knows and applies the right priorities. Mm. It's a controlled mind under discipline we need to be focused on the ta task paul tells us in romans 12 too, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of god so a controlled mind is able to discern even the will of god what is good and what is acceptable and what is perfect so it's by setting our mind 
to renewal that it becomes sound mm. it's something that we don't drift into you can't mm. drift into this it won't just kind of happen over a period of time unless we make keystone changes in our in how we think and that takes effort to draw on the resources of the spirit jesus reminded the pharisees of the great commandment didn't he you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your mind mm. so there's a clear emphasis on being a clear thinker a focused thinker and applying ourselves to that yeah thank you it's it is really in many ways convicting to all of us to think of these three things power love and a sound mind mm. because i can't think of many occasions when i'm you know exercising power in my service of god love and a sound mind if if we bring those three together it does seem that we'll be really effective in serving god exactly what he wants us to be effective isn't it yeah yeah and yet how often we're not you know we should really think about that more often mm. so how do we look to jesus christ as our leader and example in this because mm. we recognize that we're sinful human beings and although we've been given the command here to have power love and a sound mind and to fan the gift that is within us mm. we can't do this without our leader the lord jesus christ you're right john Mark. we we certainly can't christ is everything to paul here mm. Christ is everything to Timothy here, and he really needs to be everything to us in all of this. He is the perfect embodiment of that spirit that Paul is talking about. Mm. He, he has the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind because he is the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. What gifted Jesus? What, what was his gifting? Well, he was the gift. <laughs> he was never an ember. He was always a blazing light. Uh, I am the light of the world, he says. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. This power of love and of a sound mind is most, I think, profoundly manifest in the cross. Now listen, if we are Christ's, then he has gifted us. Mm. And if he has gifted us, he has given us this supernatural spirit to aid us as we use our gift. He is that spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Without him, we can do nothing. With him, we can do anything he gives us for. Mm. 